And welcome back to Spiritual Strength Live. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast-to-coast -coast spiritual coach from Spiritual Strength. As always, we're taking the analogy of looking at uh, physical fitness, physical health, and making that analogy to spiritual fitness, spiritual health. Obviously, we know the importance of being physically healthy, the importance of being physically fit. How much more important is it to be spiritually healthy, to be spiritually fit? And that's exactly what, what we're getting at. You know, we, we don't settle for mediocrity in any other area of our life, whether it comes to our business, sports, school, our career, whatever it is we're doing. If we're running triathlon, Sean, kicking butt, doing great things. God bless you. Keep going. Um, whether we're wrestling, anything that we're doing, we're constantly striving to be the best. We're str constantly striving for greatness. So why in any area of our life would we settle for mediocrity? It makes no sense at all whatsoever. We don't want to be spiritually mediocre, and that's the most important area of our life. So we're striving for that spiritual strength, which we know we can, we can only get from God. It's a grace. We can't do it on our own. <clears throat> okay, that being said, let's begin with the prayer. I'm actually going to begin with the prayer that they, they do in Opus Dei for the, um, for the recollection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence, and beg your pardon for my sins, and the grace to make this time of uh, spiritual strength fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so, a uh, really good topic today that I wanted to talk about, what Christianity is and what it's not, and um, a lot of confusion about this, a lot of, a lot of misunderstandings, and we got to get back to the root of it, we got to get back to the very heart of things. So, <clears throat> starting it off, um, Christianity is not, it's not a philosophy, it's not a theory, it's not um, a good idea. Christianity is a relationship with Christ. Okay, that's that's what it's about. It's it's about Jesus, and and that's real. It has to start from there. And I'm guilty of doing this throughout throughout my life. When I would talk about maybe my views on things, or when I would talk about the faith, I'd almost kind of like, well, I don't want to offend anyone by saying the name Jesus. So I'm going to kind of talk around the issue. But there's really no way of talking about our faith. There's no way of talking about. Um, what it is that we believe without bringing up Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead. It all goes back to the cross and the resurrection. If we don't have that, we got nothing. We don't have Christianity. We can't talk around those issues. So that's so Jesus is the very presence, uh, is, the, is the very center of everything. Okay, so even if, even if you look at it from a, a logical argument, you know, a lot of times they'll say, <clears throat> you know, um, separation of church and state, which means... Uh, a different thing, actually, than what most people think it means. But we're not even getting into that. Um, is it possible to separate God and politics? Is it possible to separate God and, and, our, and our views on, on something, on this or that? And, and in actuality, it's when you think about it logically, it's impossible to separate God from any area of our life. Okay, we're not going to get into the minutia of um, each, each one of those different domains, but it is impossible to separate God from any area of our life. Why? Okay, because we... We know that God created the universe out of nothing, all right? You're, you're, you're looking at the Judeo-Christian God of the Bible. He created the universe out of nothing, okay? So imagine a carpenter, and I know I've used this analogy before, but it's definitely worth um, going through again. If a carpenter creates a chair out of wooden nails, I don't have the wooden chair. The wooden chair's, chair's over here. You can't see it right now. But if a carpenter creates a chair out of wood and nails, okay, once the carpenter hammers the nails in there, the chair is standing up on its own, the carpenter can walk away because the properties that, that, that the chair is made of can stand on their own, the wood and the nails. Okay, so the carpenter can walk away from the chair. Well, now, God is, the, the, you could say, the heavenly carpenter. And look, interestingly enough, not a coincidence, Jesus was a carpenter. St. Joseph, um, his foster father on earth, was a carpenter, right? He's the builder, he's the creator. <clears throat> well, God made the universe out of nothing, as we said, the carpenter made the chair out of wood and nails, so he could walk away after the chair is complete. God created the universe out of nothing, which means he is holding everything into existence. He's holding everything together. If God walks away from the universe, it ceases to exist. If God withdraws his grace, it ceases to exist. So God is, God is inextricably linked to the universe, as the word that my fiance Gino always uses, inextricably. I had to look it up myself. It's... He, he's in everything. 
Okay, that doesn't mean God is the chair, that doesn't mean God is the plan, but God is within everything. Okay, so that's the first thing we, we want to understand, that we, we can't separate God from anything, from anything that we have. No, and that would actually be true, that like logically, any religion that believes in God would have to say that, because God is in everything. If they hold to the belief that God, is, that God created the universe out of nothing, they would have to say that you know, God is, God, you know, you, you can't separate God from any topic or any discussion that you have. Okay, back to Christianity, okay? We're, what, we're, what we're called as Christians, we believe, okay, when we're baptized, we've actually died with Christ. We've put the old, the old man is put to death, and now you're living in the new man. Now, of course, we still have, we still have um, inclinations to sin. We're not perfect or anything, but we, we're, in, we're in a situation where we're not a faith, Christianity is not a faith where we're reaching out to God, okay? Like most, most religions, when you think about religion, it's man's reach for God, okay? Christianity is a little bit different than that. We believe that God came down to us. He assumed our human flesh, became a real person, okay? Walked this earth and took the steps towards us. It's not man's reach for God. God has already reached for us. He came down to this earth and he reaches out for us. And... And what does he say? If we look at if we look at John chapter fifteen, Jesus says, "I am the vine, and you are the branches." In Saint Paul, he um, Saint Paul says, "Christ is the head, and we are the body." Okay, in both of the in both of those in both of those um, lessons, those those Bible chapters in Corinthians, First Corinthians, and when you look in John chapter fifteen, that's the doctrine of the mystical body of Christ. We, be- we become a part of Christ. So in our life, we're called to, we all know we're supposed to be Christ-like. We all know we're supposed to imitate Jesus. But it's even more than that. We're called to be Christ. Now, don't misunderstand me here. It doesn't mean we have God's power and we can do the things that God does. No. But when we, when we become baptized, when we're baptized believers, we are now, the old man is dead and we're putting on the new man. So the old person, the old gene, is dead at the baptism. And see, we don't, we fail to recognize this. I didn't recognize this. Uh, you know, it's stuff you, you have to learn over time. But when you're baptized, the old man is dead, and now you are, you are living in Christ. He, he came in the flesh and died for our sins. My sins, your sins, and the sins of the whole world. So um, he took our place up there on the cross. So we're living, in order for us to have the resurrected life, the hope in heaven, it's because we're living in Christ. And if you remember last week when I, gave, when I gave the spiritual strength, last week or the week before, I talked about why we start our prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, And, and the reason why we do that is because we're recognizing that our prayers have no merit on their own. None. Okay, <laughs> The only reason why our prayers have any merit is because we live in Christ. And I think this is somewhere in Acts of the Apostles, or maybe it's John. They say it in Mass all the time because it's, again, in the Bible. You know, through him, with him, and in him. That's how we exist as Christians. We exist through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. Okay, so we're we're intimately linked to him. And it's, again, very different than any other religion out there. We're not reaching out for God. God has reached out for us. And, and when we become baptized, initiated into the faith, we become a part of Jesus. Or as St. Paul to the Romans in chapter 12, it, we're grafted onto Christ. Okay, so, and that's why when we die, we could share an everlasting, everlasting joy in heaven because we're a part of Christ. Not because we did anything, not because the things we did on earth are because we were, we were a good person, but because we're grafted onto Christ. So, something you have to think about, something you have to pray about. You might have to watch the video a few times and, and go over it. Um, but that's, that's a big difference between Christianity and other faiths. It's not us reaching out for God, it's God coming to us. And then more so, it's, it's not just imitating Jesus, it's not just being like him, which of course we are called to do. But more importantly, we're called to be Christ in our life. That doesn't mean you have to be a monk, it doesn't mean you have to be a nun. It means that whatever it is in your life, whatever your vocation is in life, maybe it's a student right now, um, you know, a son, a daughter, a mother, a father, you know, a certain job, doctor, salesperson, whatever, whatever it might be, you're called to be Christ in that position. Because again, we are part, once you're baptized, you are part of the mystical body of Christ. So, and that, that brings on a whole, that, you know, that, that doctrine then 
has a lot of implications. That means there's no such thing as an individual sin. Since we all become part of the body of Christ in our baptism, um, there's no such thing as an individual sin. If I, if I do something sinful, I'm hurting my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm hurting you. When you sin, um, you're hurting me and other people around you. So there's no, we're, we're intimately connected to one another in a way that we can't, that, that we can't even understand. That's, again, part of a mystery, part of faith. But, but we accept the mystery not on blind faith, but because it was given to us by the God-man, Jesus himself. Okay, so very important information. And again, it's, it's not just acting like trying to be a good person or trying to be like Jesus. We are called to be Christ. So that's all part of that mystical body. And again, if you, you missed what I was saying before, John chapter 15, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can bear no fruit. Okay, so we know we have to abide in Jesus. We have to stay in him. Now think about that. That's a, that's an interesting thing be, to be in Jesus, right? We're, we're um, like, we don't talk about that and other faiths don't, don't speak like that. No one talks about, a Buddhist doesn't talk about being in Buddha, right? A, uh, and we're not putting anyone down. I'm just making a, a comparison. And, and if you look at like, let's say Confuciusism, um, Confucius was saying, he, you know, he, he would say, don't, he wouldn't put the focus on himself. He puts the focus on, on, on something else, you know, B Buddha, all the different religions, they don't put the focus on themselves. It's, it's always on, it's like, well, let's, let's focus on, on God. Let's focus on the, you know, the way we want to live our life. Jesus came, he didn't do that exactly. He came in and you know, he didn't do that really at all. He came in and he said, you know, I am the life and I am the light of the world. Abide in me. So when we talk about Jesus, we talk about him radically different. He, and he talks about himself radically different than, than any other faith or any other religion. So that's, that's why I want to make that point that when we look at, when we look at Christianity, we, you know, sometimes we think, well it's, well, it's just one of the, the many religions. They're all about the same. No, it's, it's, it's very different. We believe we're living in Christ. I don't know any other faiths that, um, definitely not any of the major world religions that are that are making that claim, that that we're that we're actually living through, with, and in uh, the living God. So, um, just an interesting thing, something to think about, something to pray about. If you want more information on that, it's called the mystical body of Christ. Okay, and again, you could you look this up, look this up online. Um, any other questions you have, definitely let us know. But a great thing. Let's keep praying about it. Let's keep growing in faith together. And again, whatever position we're in in our life, in our life, anything we are, as a friend, as a student, as a coach, we're called to be Christ in that position. Okay, so let's let's do that. That's a, that, let's make that our prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we 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 thank you for all that you've given us. Uh, we we truly believe in you. We believe in your Son that He came to reconcile the world back to you. Uh, we, we pray that we just remember that, that we don't live for ourselves. It's not our life. It's not our way. It's your life. It's your way. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Help us to live like that. Help us to, help us to uh, include you in everything that we do and make you the center of our life so we're in a proper, a proper stance of praise towards you in everything that we do. We ask you to continue to bless all of our family and friends and draw us deeper to yourself. We ask all this in Jesus' name through the Blessed Mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Next week, uh, Spiritual Strength Live. We'll be on board again. Take care.